All right, so I just got done watching Impact for August 2nd, 2012. It was a decent show. I mean, I'm not going to rip on it or anything, but I'm not going to praise it at the same time. I would have to say that it's probably more so a mediocre show. Um, I'm just going to talk about some brief things that happened during in the night. If I forgot something, it'll probably be in the description. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is the whole Claire Lynch, Chris Daniels, Kazarian baby shower that they had for for uh, what's her name's baby Claire's baby that's gonna be coming in the next few weeks or something AJ's baby supposedly I I just thought it was all just comedy relief to kind of you know get your mind off of the aces and eights type of storyline since I guess that's supposed to be the the big storyline in TNA now is the whole aces and eights thing um. Christopher Daniels, uh, he mocked the crowd once. He was talking in, uh, I think, Italian, and he was saying uh, it was the prize piece that stands for the prize piece or something. He's like, you idiots, go back to school. <laughs> it was funny. Uh, it was funny. I do get a kick out of uh, Christopher Daniels as a heel. I mean, I, I understand a lot of people actually don't like Christopher Daniels as a heel, but... I think he's just a natural born heel, just like a lot of people. Like Triple H was a natural born heel. Bobby Roode is a natural born heel. I believe Austin Aries is a natural born heel. Now, a lot of wrestlers are just naturally born heels. But Christopher Daniels just plays that role so well. And Kazarian was kind of playing the secondary backup guy. You know, he was kind of playing the typical, I, I'm your slave, so I'm going to do whatever Christopher Daniels tells me to do. And then, I'm just going to say this right now, Claire Lynch is a terrible actor. Terrible actor. She was, when she was screaming, um, what was she screaming when she was running out of the ring? She was like, oh, we'll see, or something like that. Or the choice is yours or something. The choice is up to you. It's up to you or something like that. She just... She made herself sound like a fangirl and not like, you know, hey, I'm mothering your child. Doesn't feel like that. She feels like a freaking fangirl. A big-time AJ Styles fan. That's what she sounded like. I don't know. I don't know if that was just me, but that was what I got off of it. I felt that she was... She's just a bad actor overall. A lot of people in TNA just need to go get acting lessons. Oh my lord. Just, I don't get it. I don't get it. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the baby shower. I thought it was funny how they were, um... They brought the baby in with the AJ coat. <laughs> and they had, uh... AJ Styles action figures and pictures of AJ Styles and uh, pictures of uh, what Uncle Chris, <laughs> Uncle Chris, like Uncle, like Christopher Daniels already assumes that he's the uncle of the baby. <laughs> um. Anyway, I, like I said, Chris Daniels just plays the heel part so well. I do think he does. He could take a good advantage. He could take a good increase. If he did take some acting lessons, since he's not the best actor around either. But, you know, I can understand. You know, he can he can pl kind of play the heel role without it anyway. Um, so that's my thoughts on the baby shower skit. I thought it was funny, but at the same time, I just thought it was quick. I mean, it was towards the end of the show. We had like a half hour of the show left, and we had this thing going. It just felt rushed for time constraints. It just felt rushed. And I understand AJ Styles was, uh, he was in Australia for promoting Impact, but whatever. That's just, that's why uh, AJ didn't show up tonight. Um, what else, what else was on the show? Oh, the tag team tight, the tag titles, the tag team match with, uh, Ion and Rude versus Austin Aries and Kenny King. The match was solid to open the show. But I just felt like the same thing like with the with the Claire Lynch storyline. It felt 
rushed. I don't know why. Like, I don't... I was just feeling that rush, you know? I mean, first off, I can't trust Zima Ion as a champion. I don't trust him as a champion. I don't like him. I think he's... I mean, I understand that's his character. Is he's way too full of himself. But he plays that... He plays that character a little too well. He plays that character a little too much. Like, he actually might act like that in real life is kind of how he acts with that storyline. But anyway, um, that's with him with the t uh, title. Kenny King ends up getting the win over him with the... I forgot what it's called now. It's going to kill me. I don't know. He hits him with that... Uh, the... Like, the FU-looking slam, like, rock bottom. Like, it looked like if the, the FU and the rock bottom had, you know, intercourse and they had a baby. That's kind of what his... A uh, signature move kind of looks like he kind of just throws him back and looks like a rock bottom, but it looked cool. And then uh, with Kenny King getting the win, um, I I gotta say Kenny King worked really good with Bobby Roode. He did. Well, I remember when Bobby Roode and Kenny King were the were the legal men earlier on in the match. They worked so good. Kenny King just was so good in that ring with Bobby Roode. You would think that they've been practicing for five years for this moment. That's how good they were in the ring. That's how I. That's what I thought. But that's just my thoughts on that. Um, and then I'll end it off with um, the Bound for Glory match with James Storm and Kurt Angle. I gotta say, this match was really good. And the reason why I say it's really good... It didn't feel rushed at all, even though we had 20 minutes left on the show. And there was just a lot of actual wrestling. Like, you know what I mean? There's not like this gimmicky crap that, you know, WWE has. You know, like the like how they work gimmicks into the matches and everything. It didn't feel like it in this match. I mean, you know, I, I kind of felt, you know, like how Kurt Angle does when he does the, the three German suplexes. You're supposed to kind of feel, hey, it's Kurt Angle. It's Kurt Angle's move. But other than that, it actually felt like a real wrestling match. It actually felt like a good match. And it was, a, it was like, it was a good match. Um, there was a point where both people... Both uh, Kurt Angle and James Storm hit their opposite finishers. Kurt Angle hit the last call super kick. Um, he tried to hit it, but he couldn't get his leg up all the way. So it looked like James Storm kind of had to bend down a little bit more to get uh, so Angle could get his leg up. And then uh, later, later part in the match, James Storm actually hits Kurt Angle with the Olympic Slam or the Angle Slam or whatever it's going to be called now, the Olympic Slam. But only got a near fall. It was only a near fall, but it was it was just a good match overall. Solid match. Um, the the Aries, Rude, Bully Ray, Sting, and I don't know why Devon and Bischoff were out there. Why were Devon and Garrett Bischoff out there saying, "Oh, Sting, we Sting and uh, James Storm we're, and Kurt Angle, we're out to protect you guys. Yeah, like the Aces and Eights are going to be scared of Devon and Garrett Bischoff. They'd run through those guys in less than two minutes. But anyway, yeah, what happened to Devon defending his title every week? That seemed, it was supposed to be like a TV title rule, and he hasn't defended that title in like almost a month. Anyway, whatever. Um, Storm gets the win with a last call super kick. Um, like I said, it was a solid match. I'm probably not going to rate it, but if I did, I'd have to rate it probably about 3, maybe 3.25 out of 5 stars. It was definitely a pretty good match. And um, no signs of the Aces and Eights anywhere. No signs. Nowhere. I, well, there were signs. I actually am going to point that out. There was a little backstage segment with Sting and Brooke Hogan. And uh, Brooke Hogan got a letter from the aces and eights and you know it got me kind of you know like oh my god they're gonna attack brooke hogan they're gonna attack a woman they're gonna attack a lady they're gonna you know they're gonna attack a female but obviously that's not what happened they haven't they didn't they, all they did was you know brooke got the letter she kind of threw it down and left and then sting was kind of you know getting ready he was pissed off and everything and i'm i don't know i like i said more acting lessons. I'm not taking Sting seriously in this feud right now. Because 
he's not acting like he really hates these guys. He's acting like he kind of has to feud with these guys. And they keep rumoring that James Storm is the mastermind behind the Aces and Eights. I don't think so. And I know a lot of other people think so. I don't think it was anybody in that ring. Nor do I think it's Hulk Hogan. I think it's going to be either two people. Two people. And I'll tell you why in just a second. Number one. The one person, and I don't know, this one can kind of go both ways. It kind of, you know, could go either way. But what I'm thinking, the number one person behind this Aces and Eights feud is Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett. It would make perfect sense. Jeff Jarrett is getting revenge on Impact Wrestling for getting fired by Jeff Hardy. And he got fired by Sting. So it would make sense that Jeff Jarrett is leading a group of rebels to take over TNA so he can get his job back as the, you know, founder of TNA and everything. Which would make sense, and actually the more one that I'm leaning towards. Number two, the other one that I'm thinking about, and that it could be, is Eric Bischoff's return to TV. Think about this. Eric Bischoff has had a history of leading heel stables. Immortal and the NWO and WCW. He's had a big past with managing heel stables. So why can't he try and get his job back with the company? Because remember, he got fired. Remember, he got fired. He lost his last name and he got fired. Remember that. He was fired by TNA. And this is the perfect way to bring him back onto TNA TV. Although it wouldn't make sense with the, you know, the current storylines right now. So if I had to guess right now who I believe is the mastermind behind the Aces and Eights stable, I think it has to be Double J Jeff Jarrett. That's who I believe. Anyway, leave me your thoughts and opinions down below. What do you guys think about Impact? I apologize that this video, um, I just kind of wanted to make this video. I wanted to kind of, you know, let my thoughts out on what happened on TNA tonight. Anyway, that's my thoughts. I uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Expect the chair video, like I said, tomorrow. I'm still writing down some good ones. I have about two, three right now off the top of my head right now. I haven't written any down yet. But expect that video tomorrow, and I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Like the video, fa add it to your favorites. Uh, become the Subber of the Day. Like I said in the last video, the Subber of the Day was Chase Oliver 68 Go subscribe to him. Link is down in the description, and I will talk to you guys later. I'm Perry the Entertainer, signing out, and peace out. Leave me your thoughts about Impact down in the comment section below.